Greetings. Here you see my Lights of America model 7020, a uh, 17 watt fluorescent black light that you've seen in some of my videos before. Um, as you can see, it looks in kind of sorry shape right now, and the bulb was taken out. Um, there's a good reason why. Over the Easter weekend a few weeks ago, I got bored, and uh, people who know me uh, well enough know that a bored me is a very dangerous me. Well, I got bored, and I really never use this light at all. So I decided, what the heck, why don't I wire bulbs of the wrong size to it and see how it runs them. So first, I wired up my F30T12 bulb to it. And I plugged it in, and it started it just fine, and it gave it about 25 watts of power. No problem at all. So I said, well great, if it has no problem running a 30 watt lamp, it should have no problem running an 8 watt lamp and I'm I need I have and I have no 8 watt instant start fluorescent uh, light fixture right now and I have two uh, lamps that won't run in the Burgess Safari light so I have nothing to run them in so I thought well let's hook one up to this and uh, see how it works now the lamp I hooked up to it uh, was actually dead, it was no longer functioning, but I thought I'd see what it would do anyway. I thought, you know, what can go wrong if, uh, if the lamp draws a bit more power than it should be just because it's uh, worn out, this thing shouldn't have a problem because it has no problem running a 30 watt lamp and a dead 8 watt lamp doesn't draw as much power as a 30 watt lamp. So I wired that lamp up to this and plugged it in and this thing instantly committed suicide. The lamp flashed a little bit and then it just instantly died. And I put the 17 watt lamp back in this, plugged it in, didn't work. And I'm like, well, great, I've broken this thing now. So, um, what I did was I took out the ballast, which uh, required absolutely destroying this fixture because they did not mold it in such a way to make it easy to take apart. So this is basically garbage now. But uh, I have the ballast, and here it is. Here's the ballast. A nice looking ballast. Um, well, for a cheap ballast anyway. There's where the power cord plugs in. This wire here connected to the world's flimsiest switch. I mean, even when this thing was brand new, this switch always worried me because it's just so flimsy and it didn't like to stay on. As you can see, it doesn't even move over the whole way. It's the crappiest switch in the world. And anyway, that was connected between this wire and this wire. But anyway, so I took out this ballast and the first thing I noticed is that this fuse, I tested it with my multimeter, this fuse was blown. So I'm like, oh great, just the fuse blew. I'll just put a, a blob of solder across it and short it out. But then I got thinking, first of all, that's a very stupid thing to do anyway, and you should never uh, defeat it. But uh, I thought, well, maybe there was something else that happened here that caused the fuse to blow. So, as with any uh, electronic fluorescent lamp ballast, the first thing that came to me was, better check the transistors. Now... This board has two transistors on it. There's one right there, and there's one right there. I couldn't really find, a, it was hard to find a, a number on these transistors to find out what they were, but uh, I bent this one down, and I know you can't see there, but in very tiny, faint print, it says 4124DL. So these are 4124DL transistors. So I looked online and I found lots of information on these transistors, but I could not for the life of me find anyone selling them. I couldn't find it on eBay, I couldn't find it on Mouser or DigiKey, uh, so I thought, well great, maybe I'll never find a transistor uh, to replace uh, these, one of these, if one or both of these, if they're bad. Which by the way, I should mention, I tested both of these transistors, this one right here is in fact bad. 
Now I'm not going to explain in this video how to test transistors, but it's easy to do. You can do it just with a multimeter, but uh, yeah, this one's bad. And I could not find another 4124DL to replace it. So, uh, I did a lot of research. I went to Fairchild Semiconductor's website, and I found what? Uh, I found several transistors that could pass as equivalents, but they were all really expensive. But I, I finally uh, found one on eBay uh, that met or exceeded all of the uh, crucial requirements of this particular transistor, and uh, they didn't cost an arm and a leg. So I bought a couple, and here they are right here. These are 13005 transistors. They're high voltage transistors. They're rated for a higher voltage than these ones are. They're rated for more current than these ones are, and they're rated for a higher power dissipation. So overall, these are much beefier transistors than what's already on there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to desolder this transistor and I'm going to solder this one in its place and we're going to test this and see if it works now while these are obviously brand new transistors uh, I'm going to test them both anyway to make sure they're both good um, I paid uh, I think it was two bucks for the two of these including shipping so that's not bad um, the eBay seller, I've bought from them before and they never disappoint me. The name of the eBay seller, they have tons of electronic components uh, for really good prices. Uh, they're under two accounts. One's called Tata Electronics and one's called Tata 2009. And uh, I highly recommend them if you need transistors or integrated circuits or stuff like that. They have a ton of things. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to test these transistors to make sure they're both good. I'm going to desolder this transistor and retest it and make sure it's bad and then I'm going to solder one of these transistors in its place and then I'll get back to you. Alright, we're back. Um, the surgery was successful but it wasn't without a couple of mishaps. Um, here's the new transistor in place. Now, first of all, there was really confusing information um, on the internet um, stating, you know, on the old transistor uh, which leg was the base and which uh, leg was the emitter. So I uh, had to test this transistor a couple of times to make sure I knew which leg was which. I think I've soldered this on the right way. If I haven't, we'll sure as hell know uh, when I plug it in. Uh, but hopefully it's in correctly. I do know what the legs are on this one are, but uh, hopefully I got it right. The power plug, I desoldered the wire uh, that originally went to the switch and I directly soldered the power plug in its place. And as you can see, I soldered a new fuse on it. And I didn't have a fuse of the right size. Actually, even if I did, I wouldn't have been able to solder it in the same place. So I soldered some wires where the old fuse was and <laughs> just <laughs> soldered them right onto the new fuse. The old fuse was rated for 1.5 amps. This one's rated for 0.5. Um, under normal use, this thing should draw less than a quarter of an amp, so uh, should be fine. And uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the appropriate wires, use my alligator leads to connect them to the original 17 watt lamp. I'm going to plug it in and use a surge protector with a switch to turn it on. And uh, we're going to see what happens. This is the very first low level. Uh, repair I've ever done on a 120 volt device so I am kind of nervous and uh, I'm going to take all the safety precautions I can. Also I had quite a bit of trouble soldering the new transistor on to the point where I got this uh, blistering hot so hopefully I didn't actually damage the transistor with heat. I've never damaged a transistor with a soldering iron yet but uh, it is possible so hopefully that didn't happen. Alright so here's what it looks like. I have my 17 watt blacklight lamp connected in an instant start configuration. The remaining two wires will be unconnected. Got the power cord, it's going to go into this uh, power bar. The power bar is going to connect to there, which is connected to another power bar, double protection. And I'm going to plug this power bar in and then hit the on switch here. And hopefully it either works or 
just I just hope it doesn't do anything scary because I'm a very easily frightened person. Uh, if this thing so much as makes a cute squeaking sound, I'll probably crap my pants. And here we go. And nothing. Well, we have a problem. I wonder if, uh, I'm pretty sure the lamps, I, I'm pretty sure I just have to have it connected to these two wires. Because all the other two wires are connected to is a capacitor that's not connected to anything else. Well, unfortunately, I think this repair video is going to be a failure. I uh, desoldered the uh, replacement transistor. Luckily, actually surprisingly, it's still good. Um, so whatever was wrong with this thing that caused the original transistor uh, to blow, it didn't blow this one, which is quite surprising. But another surprising thing is, I removed the second original transistor tested it and now it tests bad so I don't know if it was bad all along or if my testing of this thing after putting in that transistor caused this transistor to subsequently blow or what but uh, at any rate at least this one didn't blow I would bet because it's a much heavier duty uh, transistor uh, it didn't blow then again when I plugged it into my kilowatt meter and turned it on it drew no power it's unfortunate that I spent, I don't know, like two bucks on these two transistors and it looks like they're not going to be put to use. But uh, then again, I'm going to throw these away because they're no longer good. Goodbye. Then again, I do have two battery powered units that need new transistors. And while these transistors by and large are not the type that would be used in a battery powered unit because they are something on the order of 20 times more powerful, um, theoretically they're the same type of transistor so they should work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this transistor in my GE 6 watt closet light which needs a transistor and we're going to see if it fires back up. Here's the ballast from my GE 6 watt closet light. You can see how much simpler it is than this ballast. Now, uh, this thing has two transistors. And as you can see, there, there they are right there. Get in the light better. One is different from the other. The transistor you see on the bottom is original and the top one isn't. The bottom transistor is a 5609 transistor, which is a very low power transistor. Um, and the top one, which was also originally a 5609 blue, when I was running this thing on 12 volts instead of the recommended uh, 6 to, to run an 8 watt lamp. So I replaced it with this uh, top transistor, which is an 882. And it worked, worked just fine. But uh, now this thing is blown again. And I don't know if this is the, if it's the 882 that blew, or if uh, this 5609 blue, so I'll have to, I'll desolder the 882 first and then test it and make sure it's good and I'll go from there. Um, I've been toying a lot with this ballast, it's so nice to experiment with because it's right in the open and here's the high voltage terminals right here that the lamp connects to. Um, this thing right here is a variable resistor and there used to be a 3, not a 3, a 750 ohm resistor here and I desoldered it and put this variable resistor in its place because I thought well maybe um, that resistor controls how much power the lamp gets and if I replace it with a resistor of lower resistance the lamp will get more power and maybe I can make a modern battery powered fluorescent lamp that actually properly drives the lamp much like the vintage Rayovac Magnum and the Rayovac Sportsman does a good job as well but uh, I replaced it with this, set it to a lower resistance, and it does not control the lamp power. As a matter of fact, I don't know what it controls at all. But I do know that when the resistance is higher, the lamp takes longer to start. When it's lower, it starts quicker. And if you set it too low, 
This thing just emits a very horrible smell and makes a sound reminiscent of a dying squirrel. Um, it seems the sweet spot's around 300-350 ohms, so I'm going to desolder this, put a proper resistor of that value in its place. I can probably find a resistor of that value among the ones on this board. But what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to test these transistors, find the one that blew, and replace it with this, and see if it works. Alright, I'm back. Um, some rather interesting things have taken place uh, since my departure to put this thing on the workbench, aka the kitchen table with a, a piece of cardboard on top. Um, first of all, these two transistors, both of them, are absolutely fine. I removed them both, tested them, they both tested good. But the problem was, when I went to put them back in, of course, actually it probably happened when I took them out because I don't have proper desoldering tools, I just use my soldering iron and a combination of that and pulling on the thing to get it out, um, I accidentally broke a couple of the traces on the circuit board here on the underside, and I can't really show you now. I replaced those traces by soldering some wires directly to this transistor on the bottom, the 5609, and then soldering the other ends of the wires to where the trace was supposed to go. And, uh, so anyway, both the transistors were fine, and so I tested the variable resistor, and it was open circuit. So that's what happened. That variable resistor just kind of crapped out, um, and uh, it just went completely open. So I've soldered a 330 ohm resistor uh, in place. Kind of funny looking there, because that's the way the legs were bent. But, uh, holy cow, this thing is in such, uh, it's in such a, in such hard shape now that if I put batteries in this thing and it works, I'm going to be very surprised. So, uh, let's throw batteries in it, uh, throw a lamp in it and, uh, see what happens. Alright, let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. <sighs> I am not having very good luck today. Well, it doesn't look good for this ballast. Uh, I have it so I can show you the handiwork I did with the wires. It just, when I apply power to it, the transistors get warm. So it is getting power. I checked all my connections here, and uh, they're all doing fine. Yes, I have a band-aid on now. I slit my thumb. You won't believe it. I slit it just by opening this up. So that's great. And, uh, yeah, the transistors get warm, and everything, I check continuity for everything, and everything's, you know, connected. And, so, I don't know, I check the inductor, that seems to be fine. I don't have proper equipment for checking capacitors, and I don't have any capacitors that I could replace these with, these, uh, ceramic capacitors. So, I think it might be curtains for this, and, uh, I'm really bummed, because that makes two fluorescent lamp ballasts so far that I have not been able to fix. So that really sucks. And this video is not really going anywhere right now, is it? But I will not leave until I get at least something fixed. So that leads us to this. This is the ballast out of that yellow fluorescent lantern that once upon a time hung up there. It suffered a blown transistor and uh, that was before I knew how to uh, do circuit board soldering. Um, where I desoldered those transistors, um, because I, I uh, short, uh, long after this thing blew, this thing blew for the first time, and I took a transistor out of this to save this. So, uh, it seems, everything seems to be still in good shape. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the transistors out of this, and put them back in this, and try and get some wire soldered so I can test it and see if it'll work again. Alright, I've soldered the two transistors back in. In place of the variable resistor that was originally here, I have this tiny little, I think it's 330 ohm resistor, because that's what I had on hand. And I've soldered uh, wires to two of the four uh, fluorescent lamp outputs for one lamp. I have no idea if they're the right ones for one lamp or what, but anyway, I'm going to hook 6 volts up to it and see if it works, which it probably won't for the sole purpose of ticking me off and helping to make this video an utter failure, but we will see. Alright, 
I borrowed a battery out of the Rayovac Sportsman. Let's uh, gingerly touch it to that wire and see if this thing spontaneously combusts. Oh, huh. well how about that? It's making a uh, squealing noise, but by God, that's the first that's the first time in a long time I've done a successful repair. I don't like that squealing sound it's making though, but uh, hey, progress. Okay, good news. It turns out the uh, squealing noise was because I had the switch on the dual lamp mode and I had only one lamp hooked up so the other transformer was crying because it was being turned on without a lamp hooked up to it. I have it to the single, uh, single lamp mode if we connect it. It runs great. In fact, it starts up faster than I've ever seen it before. This was a really crappy ballast. It ran horribly, didn't like to start or anything. And uh, maybe it was because of that resistor I put in. I don't know what value that variable resistor was set to, but whatever resistor I have there now, maybe that helped it out a bit. It works great. Holy cow. If I can keep a connection, start straight up. I like it. Cool. But however, this thing is also in need of a repair. Um, it has a blown transistor as well. So both the transistors on this board are still good. So I'm going to desolder them and one of them in this lantern and hopefully this lantern will be good once again as well. Well I got the transistors desoldered from the uh, other thing there. As you can see there's only one in the shot and that is because the other one did not survive the desoldering process. I really need to get a desolderer. How I usually do it is I uh, melt the legs with my soldering iron and then while the solder's melted, yank on the thing till it comes out. Anyway, this one transistor did survive and now uh, I'll open this thing up and show you what's inside. Ta-da! Here's what it looks like. Standard two lamp uh, ballast. Consists of those dinky little 5609 transistors. Um, the whole circuit board looks like someone spilled eggnog all over it. I don't know if that's from the uh, batteries that were in here leaking for years or what, but uh, some gum on the transformers too. But uh, yeah, um, if I remember right, uh, this side is the side that the transistor blew on. So I'll assume it's this transistor that I have to replace, but uh, I'll test them in the circuit board before I do so. Two blue wires go to each lamp, and then the other end of the other end of the lamps are shared by one wire. So uh, I'm gonna have to be careful because I have to unscrew this so I can flip it over and have to maneuver it so I can uh, do everything I need to do without uh, tearing any wires off it. Um, you can see the job I did here soldering these wires onto it for power with heat shrink tubing. So uh, I did do a half decent job on that. But uh. Anyway, I'll see what I can do here. Holy cow, the circuit board looks horrible underneath. Can't believe I paid eight bucks for this. Although, uh, I did get two very good lamps, uh, so that was pretty much worth the eight bucks alone. Well, it would appear I've hit a bit of a snag before I've even started. These transistors, I'd assume they were 5609s, they're not. They're another type that I've never dealt with before. If you can't read that, it says S8050. These are S8050 transistors. And looking online, first of all, I came across a website that claimed that they were PMP transistors, but everything else I've looked at says they're NPN, so I'll assume they're NPN. But uh, here's the problem. The pinout is different from other transistors I've dealt with. Every transistor I've ever dealt with in my life has a pinout that goes emitter, collector, base, or base collector emitter, depending on how the transistor is oriented. This one has the base in the middle, uh, instead of on one of the ends. 
And that's kind of a problem because uh, I can't shove a compatible transistor uh, like this 882 because it's not compatible. So that sucks. So that means if I want to fix this thing, uh, which already has a very low uh, probability because of my horrible soldering skills, although I have successfully repaired uh, fluorescent lanterns a couple of times, I'm going to have to buy some of these transistors. I can get 10 of them on eBay for $1.65. Uh, that's alright. Um, my gosh, these are these transistors, the S8050 is even lower power than the 5609. Uh, which is already horribly... Uh, a 5609 transistor has its limits uh, pushed horribly hard uh, running a fluorescent lantern. Um, but this thing's like half the power of it. Collector current up to 700 milliamps. Uh, the 5609 has it up to an amp. So I have a decision to make. Is this thing worth the $1.65 uh, to replace the transistors. Um, how about this? I'll remove the bad transistor and if I have no problem in removing it, as in if I don't screw up the traces on the circuit board or, or whatever, if that goes alright, then I will put the $1.65 on new ones and hopefully that'll fix this thing. Face planning the transformer. Well, I got it out alright without any damage. There's the circuit board. Here's the thing itself. I retested it. It did test bad. Um, so yeah, I guess sometime in the near future I'll buy some of those and uh, see what I can do for fixing this thing.